Paradise. Today we have Tarun Pradhan and we are going to talk about spirituality today. The first question is how is spirituality practical in our daily lives? Tarun. Well <clears throat> first of all thank you very much David for uh, inviting me again mm -hmm. and it is a pleasure to be here and do this session together. Spirituality is totally useless for anybody's <laughs> daily life. <laughs> I mean, this can be shocking for many people because uh, <clears throat> people go to spirituality to improve their lives. But no, the spirituality, when it finally matures, will totally get rid of the human life, the human existence forever. You will graduate out of the human existence. And it will, it's not going to cure your diseases. It's not going to make your body young and fit. And uh, it is not going to uh, fix your relations or fix your country or something like that. It has no worldly advantages at all. Even though there are side effects of uh, spirituality. For example, if you are uh, doing some kind of practice, and your guru has told you to eat a specific kind of diet, then it is possible that the diet, the diet will cure some things in the body or make it fit and more beautiful. For example, it will keep you slim, trim, and active, Proper. let us say, for example. Or your, when the mind becomes purified, it will start changing your behavior pattern and uh, it is possible that that kind of improvement in the mind will fix your relations and all. But those are side effects. They are uh, <clears throat> spirituality, spiritual knowledge is not meant to fix this life. It is meant to get over this life. Okay. What do you mean by get over this life? This uh, human life is a repetitive kind of um, experience. It is repeating since forever. We don't even remember, actually. This mind is a bundle of memories, and it keeps generating more and more bodies. It keeps having the same experiences again and again, although this is very much disputed. Nobody really likes to believe it. But uh, the body and uh, worldly existence becomes a burden at some point. Now, if it has not become a burden for you, then probably you are not uh, ready for the final liberation yet. That means you need to live more. You need to take more births. And you need to enjoy the human life more uh, for a few more times before you totally become tired of it and then you want to get rid of it you want to progress because there are more levels of progress beyond human so this needs to be learned by experience only you you cannot believe me blindly but uh, there is <clears throat> something called evolution of the mind it is going on we are evolving and there are stages of evolution beyond human. So a yogi or a spiritual practitioner wants to leave our human existence, wants to progress forward. So if detachment has happened from the world, from this life, then you will achieve liberation from this life. Otherwise, it will keep repeating. It will keep repeating as long as it is necessary. Okay, so identity. Um, most people here will be identified as a as a body, right? 
but you, I assume, would say that that is not completely true, or it's it's not. Uh, what would you say about that? Identifying with the body. Yes, it is not true because it is the body is not my essence. Although ah. everything that appears in our experience is one thing, isn't it? <clears throat> everything right. that appears in uh, our uh, screen of consciousness is mm. nothing but forms of consciousness. So body is also a form of the consciousness. However, it is not the essential thing in, uh, if I say I, the word I, it is, the body is not essential to that. The mm. body comes and goes, the body changes. The body is born and then changes into something and then decays and then dies. What remains while this is happening? What remains constant while this is happening is the essential thing. And that is my consciousness only. We cannot even say my consciousness. We can say the I, the consciousness that remains unchanging. So... Body is essential for uh, human uh, existence, for this, um, our experience in the world. It is an instrument that the mind has created so that we can have this kind of experiences. And uh, But it is not my essential part. This is the complete answer. If I tell you I am not the body, then there will be many, many doubts in your mind. And then who am I? And all those things, you know. And why should, why I'm carrying around this body? <laughs> well, <laughs> it is important. It is important. Without body, you won't have any experience. There wow. is no experience possible without body. It will be like deep sleep. It is yeah. because of the body we are <clears throat> engaged in some kind of experience. So that is the utility of the body. But it is not me. It is not me. For example, you use a car to get from one uh, <clears throat> city to another, but uh, you do not say that the car is me. Even though you are controlling the car, even though you know you can drive it, you put fuel in it, but you do not say that car is me because you can always dump it and you can change its parts. Similarly, body is a vehicle. We are using it for something and we, we put fuel in it like food and air and water and uh, but and it keeps changing. The parts are changing, isn't it? If you cut yeah. your hand and put a prosthetic there, you are not you did not disappear, isn't it? So, and our cells. Our cells are always changing. Cells are every minute they are dying and new yeah. ones are born. It is like a bubbling thing, it is alive. But it is not me. It is it is an instrument. You can say it's a vehicle that uh, gives us this experience, and we are using it for this experience. That's all. Okay. So identity identity you ask is derived from the body. Sometimes I say I'm the body. Sometimes I say I'm the person. Sometimes I say I'm the seeker or this manager or worker or husband wife. These things are ideas in the mind. They are yeah. not me. They identify what this thing does. That's all. <laughs> they are titles on you. Mm. So if someone is thinking now, how do I break free of identification with only the body? We would say, let's access direct experience right now. So what kind of routine do you usually use to uh, to help people with that question? How do I break free from the body? I simply ask, are you aware now? What would you answer if I say? Yes. Then I ask, is your body aware or are you aware of the body? Is your body aware of you or are you aware of the body? Because no, you said... An objection that might come up would be, 
my brain is aware of the body and my brain is a part of the body it's a prevailing theory that identification is and consciousness is created in the brain how would you respond to that um i would simply ask what is aware of the brain <laughs> wow what is But, aware of how do you know there is a brain suppose you took off your brain and looked at it in front of you would you be would you see a brain or the brain is seeing you what is your direct experience here okay i feel but what if the person so my brain would create the consciousness of being aware of the brain how how do you how how will we how will i know that the brain is creating the consciousness of uh, itself of seeing itself no <laughs> i mean i mean is it your experience or is it just a theory like uh, an assumption like uh, you are um, proposing a mechanism of some kind yeah it has the same quality as the idea of the past to me anyway it This is idea that it is an idea in the mind that uh, the brain is creating something now your original question was how would i destroy this uh, illusion that i am not the body isn't it mm-hmm. so uh, it boils down to uh, experiencing actually first i define what i am then we'll will come to the brain also <laughs> we are not going i'm not going to leave the brain so first let me let us define these things who am i and uh, what is um, this experience so first we define the i as the one that is experiencing mm. the one who experiences the one who perceives i call it usually i call it i so and uh, whatever is being perceived we call it as an experience it can be any kind of experience so first you should ask are you perceiving the body or is the body perceiving you we, even, we will, if, then, even if the brain did create consciousness it would be the consciousness experiencing the brain yes so uh, uh, that it irrespective of what is creating it i am always consciousness yeah that's i cannot say, i am the brain witnessing the consciousness it is not possible isn't it it no. is always the consciousness that is uh, the subject and the bodies and the organs of the body they are objects uh, even if you say brain is creating the consciousness this will be true uh now this that should uh, uh, get rid of this identification with the body that uh, i am the body because i am witnessing the body i am experiencing the body and i defined i myself as the experiencer so by definition itself it is you know shown that i am not the body plus how many of you are there there's no there's never been more than one it is not possible to have more than one isn't it but how many bodies you had well one but then if we get to stage yellow and turquoise on the spiral dynamic dynamics model we can say everybody everybody if i ask you is this the same body that was there when you were one year old no technically right yeah. so it was not the same when you're 5 year old or 10 year old 20 year old or, or you will be 50 or 60 years old the body is changing isn't it how many bodies are there a lot of bodies yeah infinite <laughs> yes you can break it down for convenience every year there is a change in the body and it's a new body okay 
So which one is you? <laughs> which yeah. of these bodies is you? Because you feel that I am always one. But the bodies keep changing. That means the bodies cannot be you. So this, I think by now any intelligent person will drop this identification with the body. Mm -hmm. And the final, final, uh, you know, nail in the coffin of the body is <laughs> it is an experience. You cannot deny it. Body is not experiencing. It is being experienced by something. Let us not go into this question how this consciousness is being created, you know. Let us not go there, but first clear the fundamental. It is totally in a category of experience. It is not in the category of the experiencer. It is the category of subject. Uh, sorry, it is in the category of object, not category of subject. I am the subject and body is the object. And I don't want to call the object as myself. I will always call the subject as myself. So this should get rid of the identification with the body. It will take only one minute, I think. Now, let us come to this uh, very confusing situation. Perhaps some organ in the brain, some organ in the body like brain, is creating this consciousness which calls itself a subject. So uh, I would like to put this uh, question to rest forever. Yeah, if, if, if you want it. Okay. So first thing, brain is an object. So by yeah. our definition, you cannot call it as me, cannot call it, call it as I. It is being experienced. So you cannot, you know, you will, um, like, you will be comparing oranges and apples if you mix them together. Then if the brain is the object, then where is the subject? And if brain is the subject, then how can it be seen as object? It will cause this kind of confusion, isn't it? So mm -hmm. let us go one step deeper in this matter of creating the consciousness. Now that day I was telling you this thing that uh, when I say the brain creates a thing called consciousness, which is a subjective experience, then uh, what do you mean by creation? And how does it manage that? Um, what is creation? I, I don't know. I, that's, a, that's a good answer. <laughs> Nobody knows what is creation. And second, how is it doing? What is the mechanism there? Because let us say I take clay and I create a pot out of yeah. it. I know the mechanism. I know that the clay has taken the form of the pot. Now, what is it in the brain that gets converted into consciousness and how it happens? What is the agency there that is doing it? What force is doing it? What process is doing it? Um. So I've, what I've just done, I've, the brain is an object. What I've done is I've imagined a brain and now another object, like a bouncy ball. How are we going to get conscious out of a bouncy ball? How, how do we get consciousness out of... And then we realise it's made of that. So, right? Uh, that, is, that is right. You answered your own question. First, yeah. you know, proper answer is we do not know. We do not know the process by which the brain creates any kind of subjective experience. Suppose you pinch yourself. It is a physical activity, isn't it? Yeah. Or you stab yourself. It's a physical activity. How does the pain get created in the mind? Why do you feel the pain? If it is totally physical, it should not produce anything else except you know, signals here and there, signals in the nervous system. Why is it producing a subjective experience of pain? That's a great question. Nobody knows this. Nobody knows this. 
if you go uh, reverse you you can you can easily see that that the consciousness is conscious of the brain or body or any objects it is not creating the objects it is merely witnessing the objects and then you don't need any process you don't need even though people <laughs> they they are not satisfied with this answer also and they will they will uh, put forward the theories like consciousness is creating the objects <laughs> it is not like that we do not see any process that consciousness is using to create anything consciousness is not a thing which can create something similarly brain is not creating anything it is a theory because if it is creating something then we would know we would know very quickly instantly we would see it we would be able to measure it but nobody could do it it's you know 10000 year old civilization human civilization nobody could find anything that creates consciousness or even tiny subjective experience for example the colors uh-huh. we are seeing everything in colors there are no colors in the physical world there are no colors how how am i able to see all these millions of colors there is no music there is no tone there is no um, you know oh sound it is just pressures of the air you are listening to me but you don't perceive the sound as vibrations of air you perceive it as a subjective experience i perceive How, it as understanding yes it is it is a perception it is not a process it is a sense it is not a mechanism so we do not even know this thing <laughs> and when people say oh uh, the brain produces consciousness well first you should find out how does it how does the brain produce any kind of subjective experience for example i am thinking right now and what is that thought how did how how do i know that there is thought because there is no physical equivalent of the thought nothing is there then there are emotions you see if you are in love for example or you hate somebody or you are angry or you are fearful why do we have the subjective experience when there is nothing physical corresponding to that so uh, these people who say that brain is producing everything they have exactly zero answers here not even one answer zero ones it is like a blind belief you see like a religious person believes that there is a entity in the sky on the clouds which is rewarding me or punishing me <laughs> so similarly yeah similarly it is a blind belief it's a superstition among people because they heard somebody say it and they blindly repeat it without without thinking and uh, let us go back to the subject of creation what does it mean to create so uh, when i say the brain is creating consciousness so it must be creating it out of something for example that day i was saying, telling you uh, the when you boil the water the water vapor is created isn't it mm-hmm. the water becomes steam so mm-hmm. what do we say uh, we i created steam by boiling the water now whether they have you created steam or have you changed the water to steam changed change water was already there only the state was changed now let us take uh, the, this familiar example of creating the pot out of clay did i cre- create the clay or did i simply change the form of the clay so changed. that pot appeared changed <laughs> now take uh, one more example i mean i want to put it to rest today <laughs> so uh, let us take gold you can make the gold into many many ornaments do you create the ornament or do you create the gold um when we create a gold agree. ornament when we create a gold ornament yes from from simply change the gold into this form of jewelry yeah. or bangles or whatever you know 
and then take uh, let us take a little bit complicated example um when you turn on the light bulb you are creating light how is this light created um it's just changed form because it can't be created or destroyed it is just the electricity electricity changes into light isn't it yeah electricity is energy light is energy nothing was changed form it transformed now let us take even more complicated example like the electrical generator you uh, turn the wheel very fast of the generator and the copper coil it produces current so uh, it is we say it is generating electricity so how is it generating the ele electricity from where is it coming it was, it was already there <laughs> yeah i mean the technical people people who know science because this uh, consciousness and brain uh, you know drama is mostly um, the um, product of these scientific kind of people <laughs> who think they know science but they have heard it somewhere they do not know what is science so the electricity i mean the electrons are already in the wire only thing is that it, they are being pushed now they are forced to flow in the external circuit you did not produce electricity it was already there it simply started flowing now the, this uh, all this process is a process of creation isn't it creation of steam creation of pot creation of uh, light creation of electricity they, we commonly call it as creation now let us apply this formula to uh, creating consciousness let us try to create consciousness out of brain what do we need to do <laughs> what is it that needs to be changed into consciousness what is confusing because there's you know okay okay let, let us let us assume that we have changed something a substance was there in the brain or let us say some kind of force was there in the brain some kind of unknown energy was there in the brain and we changed it into consciousness but isn't it simply change that means consciousness is already there in the latent form you brought it into a visible form that means you did not create the consciousness you simply change something into consciousness because it is not possible to create anything from nothing like for example the water vapor the steam cannot come out of the pot if there is no water there isn't it if there is no latent consciousness in the brain it cannot produce this visible experience of consciousness oh uh, yeah and what when people this? when people are sort of unconscious the consciousness is still there you know but they're not conscious of the consciousness and that's yeah. where the experience is not there but it is there something is there in the latent form let us say you go to sleep very deep sleep and then you get up in the morning what do you say i was unconscious i was i, was, I did not know what happened but how did the consciousness get started it must it must be <laughs> there must be something which got converted into the experience this our alive experience subject to experience uh -huh. of this wonderful world and the colors and shapes and sounds so there must be something which was inactive then converted into this living experience that i call as consciousness or awareness so it looks like that people who claim that brain creates consciousness do not know the meaning of consciousness they do not know the meaning of uh, um, creation how what how things are created and they do not really understand this sentence the meaning of this sentence they repeat it like a parrot because they <laughs> they heard it somewhere on the tv they do not have this much intelligence to even um, analyze this sentence completely so we we analyzed it right now and we found that i'm sorry 
something popped up on my screen you know my phone creates things <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we just analyzed it and uh, i would request everybody who is listening to you and you also that uh, you do this kind of practice like uh, homework you don't do not believe me do not take my words for granted just like you took the words on tv or some other book the brain creates the consciousness you did not pause and think you simply believed it blindly so do not believe my opinion blindly i actually do not know what creates consciousness i simply experience it i am the consciousness that is all i know how can you i even know what creates it <laughs> and uh, i will give you one last uh, thing one last uh, um, insight which will totally demolish that the conscious that the, this um, belief that the consciousness can be created let us say uh, there is no consciousness right now are you with me Hmm. there is no consciousness right now let us say t plus 1 second consciousness is created now let's not worry who created it what created it which is the process that created it let us say it was created now what knows that there was no consciousness and then it create then it got created what knows it yeah Is it that. even possible to know it? Mm, no. Wait. I'm my I'm. I'm okay. trying to understand I, I, it. I mean, I mean, nobody thinks like this. This is this is only you know somebody on the non-dual path will think like this. <laughs> so yeah. I'll clear it up, and then you can follow up. Or you can you know analyze it if you want. so whole of your you can spend whole of your life thinking about it if the consciousness is not here right now and after one second it got created we need to establish this fact we need to establish it for once and for all and for that you need a witness you need an evidence you need an observer that can say that i saw i saw the consciousness being created now if the observer was already present and was conscious of this process then the consciousness was already there and since consciousness is a subjective thing you cannot say that the observer is somewhere outside only i can observe consciousness isn't it nobody else so <laughs> no you none of your instruments can observe consciousness remember it is a subjective thing so when i say that oh i was there was no consciousness and now it got created by some means that means i was already present that means i was already conscious <laughs> so logically it is impossible to observe in the creation of consciousness and you will never know whether it was created or not you will only know one thing that i am consciousness there is no knowledge that that can be obtained before there was consciousness it will be a fantasy it will be a day dream of the mind yes you can make it very very sophisticated like you say there are some quantum mechanical processes and some particles from external dimensions and they are creating the consciousness it is bullshit <laughs> <laughs> isn't it you never see all these things you will see only consciousness and it will be always present it will be already be there when all these things are happening otherwise you cannot say even one sentence that will be a fantasy that will be a theory nobody will have it an evidence now you can believe it blindly i mean that is personal choice isn't it what can i say <laughs> if you want to believe there are blue unicorns flying around my house right now you know who am i to stop you if it is not seen it is not true your experience is your truth mm. very good so everybody should take it as an exercise and ponder over this
things that I just now I said. You know, I did this for many, many years, actually. <laughs> I did all this kind of analysis and introspection for many years. After that, I got a little bit of confidence to say it in public. How would it change the world? Uh, actually, let's... I think what is really, I want to get direct experience right now that we are e each other. So the we're using the same consciousness to be aware of the of these two bodies. So yeah, so uh, if if we if everybody integrated that it would effects would include in high school if you you were being bullied you would be your harasser as much as you are this body and you will be your lover as much and so this is really important to to integrate into your life and uh follow follow us to, in, to integrate it. You are saying how to witness that uh, there is only one consciousness. So we cannot witness it, actually. But we can arrive this arrive at this thing through logic. You will find that even though there is only one consciousness, it cannot be seen as one. It is uh, not two but we cannot say it is one. That is why we stop at not two. That is why we stop at non-dual. We do not say one. So this should be kept in mind when we say that there is one consciousness. We cannot arrive at the oneness directly. We can arrive at the oneness indirectly. Now, the funny thing is, right now, our experience is of oneness, actually. Right now, I'm experiencing not to. And that will be tricky. That will be a little bit tricky to find out. But uh, let us start by uh, answering this question. How many consciousness do you know of? One. One. How many consciousnesses do I know of? One. One. How to know that it is the same thing? Um, we need to match its properties, isn't it? We need to match. Yeah. Its. Let us say I have uh, um, one. Uh, I have an apple, let us say, and you have a photo of that apple, exactly the same apple. Let us drop the apple. Let, let me say that I have a dog and you have a photo of that dog. Now I say my dog is brown and you take a look at your dog and you say, yes, brown. And I say, my dog has blue eyes. And you say, yes, this dog has blue eyes. And I say, it has long fur. And you say, yes, long fur. How, what are we doing? We are comparing the qualities. And then we arrive at a conclusion that, oh, same dog. It's one dog. It is, you're looking at it different uh, from a different point of view. I'm looking at the dog from a different point of view. But it's a one dog. Now let us do this for consciousness. What color is of uh, is your consciousness is? What is the color of your consciousness? Invisible. No it's color. Color colorless, yes. Colorless. There is no quality called color on consciousness. So I agree. My consciousness, no color. How big is your consciousness? Like how many meters? <laughs> How many, how many microns or kilometers? Um, it is without space. No space. Right. No, yeah, so I agree. Now, what is the temperature of your consciousness? Probably it is some energy, some electricity. What is the temperature there? Is it, it is hot? Without. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it has no quality. It has no energy, isn't it? So I agree. Now you cook up any kind of quality there is, any kind of quality. Is there any sound in your consciousness? No. 
does not make sound. It only perceives the external sounds. So I agree, it does not make any sound also. So all the qualities that I can count off uh, in my consciousness match that of yours. Now let us take something, you know, serious. I was just joking about colors and sounds. Is there a witness there? Is there a presence there? Yeah, feels like I'm a yeah. witness. Same, same thing here, same thing here. Can you experience anything without consciousness? Um, no. Same thing here. Is the consciousness blissful or not? Like it if is. you forget about the mind, is there a it peace is. there? Yeah, I mean, it's without emotion. Yeah, no emotions because it observes the emotions and it does not think it is that which observes the thinking and same for me do would you like to call it emptiness like because it is not not anything would you like to call it like it is empty space kind of thing yeah same here so whatever we do it matches which means you are matching the photos of the dogs. They are the same dog. You will never find a tiniest of difference between what is observing there from your point of view and what is observing here from my point of view. There is not a tiniest bit of difference. And that is, that is the limit of the mind, you know. How do we know there is one thing because we cannot see a difference in those things. So even though consciousness is not a thing, still we cannot find a difference. So this is one thing to um, uh, practice. I mean, you need to remove all your doubts. Probably there is some difference, you know, who knows? <laughs> you will probably find the difference and get the Nobel Prize for discovering another consciousness, the consciousness number two. Although nobody nobody could find anything so far. Now there is something which I like. It is a metaphor, but I like it very much. I'm giving you that metaphor so that you can think about it. Everybody who is listening should think about these things. They are very important. Uh, let us see. Uh, you, let us assume there is a daytime there, and let us assume there is a daytime here. And can you ski, see the sky? Suppose you are outside, sitting outside. Yeah. Can you see the sky? Mm -hmm. What color is it? Uh, it's blue. Blue sky. I can also see the sky and it is also blue. That, you know, makes us suspicious that probably it is the same thing we are looking at. But I see my sky. My sky is, you know, this much only above my head. And you see your sky, which is the, that much patch of the sky, probably there are buildings or trees that are covering everything else. And you cannot see my sky here. Okay, we are seeing different parts of the sky. Does, does that make it two skies or is it the same sky? This is the question now. Um, it's... The the stuff around the sky, I mean, it's the same sky, but and it doesn't change because of the stuff around it. Yeah, the stuff keeps changing, but the sky is the same. Uh, if somebody says, no, man, you are seeing a different sky and he's seeing the different sky, that means there are two skies here on, on top of the earth. Now, that would be stupid, <laughs> isn't it? That is a stupid statement. The sky is one. It is very big. It is infinite. It is possible to have two views of it, not knowing that it is so big. But we know that there cannot be more than one sky, but we can have two views of it. Now, let us say, suppose it starts raining here and the sky is covered with cloud. Would it become some other sky? If it is covered with cloud? No. No. So I'm seeing my house. 
would that make my consciousness different from your consciousness which is witnessing your house no no why does this belief arise in, uh, in the minds of people you know not uh, very mindful people because they say i can see different things you can see different things that means my consciousness is different your consciousness is different how is it even possible <laughs> that is like saying because i can see different kind of skies there, there the weather is different here that that changed the sky you know that produced a new sky no it did not that which is witnessing has the same essence everywhere it is not different for anybody this can be established like this plus tell me what is the difference between um, your experience and your consciousness they are one and the same see you are a trained fellow you you already know this stuff so you can yeah. say it without hesitation but an ordinary person won't be able to say it have to go Isn't to direct it? experience over and over yeah. again remember that you have never experienced anything without a consciousness and your experience is simply consciousness of that experience suppose i experience something here that thing is actually consciousness of that thing there is no separate thing called the object and no separate thing called consciousness the object is consciousness of the object so let us say my body is my consciousness your body is also this consciousness my body is your consciousness and your body is also the same consciousness so there is no difference between the consciousness here and there throughout this million uh, not millions thousands of kilometers of distance our essence is connected our essence is one this is our direct experience actually this is the, the oneness is right now right here although the mind breaks it down into many things and that gives us an illusion that there are many things and since uh, people have this kind of assumption that if the uh, experience is different the experiencer must be different which is totally illogical irrational thought it is it is wrong assumption i mean i won't even call it a belief <laughs> you can have a right belief but this is totally wrong belief it is not even a theory actually it is wrong logic to say something like this you can use the metaphor of the sky to prove it so across the space and time the ground of that space and time is one our essence is one although the forms are different although the perceptions and bodies and our experiences are different like uh, one of my teachers francis lucille wow he he says that the experience does not tell anything about the experiencer now look at this sentence how beautiful it is how oh profound my God. It is. the experience wow, yeah. does not tell anything about the experiencer the one who is experiencing cannot be defined by what is being experienced and i know i know i i watched this uh, in a video that was uploaded by francis and the person who asked this question he actually started crying <laughs> he heard this sentence he started crying because this experience of oneness is very profound when you have it for the first time i think that sentence is so beautiful because it starts off with experience and ends in experience i love linguistics i got a english award in 2010 So okay. <laughs> this is this is the end I think. Yeah, let's make that the end. Okay, okay. So thank you very much Tarun. Um 
all your links will all his links will be in the description below go check it out because he's constant he's he, constant creativity coming so uh thank you very much tarun thank you very much mm-hmm.